All right, YouTube, so we are back to talk about some Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's been a few days, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. But before we hop into it, on our last video, we talked about, you know, kind of the post-game content. And I mentioned how with hard mode, you have to, like, restart a chapter if you die. And apparently that's not the case. That's, like, a really, really, like, uncommon thing to happen. I know it's happened to me. I know sometime around launch, like, before or after launch, something like that, I had somebody comment on one of my videos about it, which is where I first heard about it. I don't know what it is, I don't know what causes it, all I know is it's happened to me once so far, and it's happened to at least one other person. Or maybe me and this person just, like, think that happened? I don't know, maybe we're both crazy people. As for the sort of sporadic uploads and the lack of content on the channel, I'll just be completely transparent with you guys. This game just didn't have the content I thought it would. Like, I, it doesn't have the kind of content you can make daily uploads on. This game didn't, you know, provide a bunch of, like, secrets and hidden things and things to talk about. Like, and part of that might be because the game's pretty linear. And again, linear doesn't mean a bad game. But the, the game is what it is. There's just not a whole lot to do within the game, right? And also, I think creatively, like, my hype was sort of killed because of the launch of the game. The game coming out super weird and people, like, you know, getting the game a week or more early before everybody else and already beating the game and already playing through the game on hard mode and already everything about the game was already online before a lot of us could even play it, right? So it's like, as a content creator, I can't really cover things for the game because the information's already out there. I can't find things originally. Kind of just have to reiterate things that other people are saying or doing. And also kind of going back to the linear thing, like a lot of us thought that the game was going to be a lot bigger, right? Like we thought we, because it's Midgar only, that we'd be able to like explore a lot of Midgar, at least a couple of extra sectors that weren't in the original game. And it wasn't that. Like we had a leak a long time ago that said we were just kind of retreading old territory, right? We're kind of just playing the Midgar segment from the original game, going to those exact same areas. And that turned out to be true, man. And again, I didn't dislike the game. I don't mind that it's a linear game, but it just doesn't have a lot of content. We're never going anywhere, even if it's a few days between uploads. We'll always have content on the channel. It's just not going to be as often as it was before launch. Because before launch, we're doing pretty much every single day. But that's why we're here today to talk about some stuff. The Ultimania is still being translated. We're still using uh, Itakamochi or Audrey. She's still, as of today, translating things from this Ultimania. I believe it's like 700-something pages from what I've seen. Like, it's a massive book. So it's going to take a long time to get everything translated. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Ultimania kind of describing some of the locations around the world of Gaia in Final Fantasy VII, like Kosido Soul, Cosmo Can, things like that. Not super groundbreaking stuff, but it's really the first time we're... Get into really like hear about these locations within the remake universe, if you want to call it that. So we'll read over this really quickly since that's stuff that a lot of us kind of already know. Wutsai, the country that Shinra fought against, although they are not at war right now, they have left a very bad impression among the people of Midgar. Shinra Company adds to the hostility by saying that another war could happen, and that they are taking precautions should war break out again. Nibelheim, Cloud and Tifa's hometown where Sephiroth burned to the ground five years ago. The nearby Mount Nibel is what it should say probably. Houses a Mako reactor. The water tower in the town is a nostalgic area for Cloud and Tifa. Gold Saucer, a large theme park that houses various attractions. Jessie originally wanted to be an actress, so she rehearsed often and eventually was able to get the leading role here. The Chocobo races are also an eye-catching attraction that tests the speed and stamina of the Chocobo, measuring its excellence. Cosmo Canyon, known by many as the place where studies of the origin of the planet are conducted in a village surrounded by red cliffs. The bar Seventh Heaven sells a cocktail drink named after this place, and it's very popular on the menu. Costa del Sol, a vacation spot where people go to relax, where the sun is always shining. In the Sex of Five slums, there's a newlywed couple, is what it probably should say, who's wondering where they should go on their honeymoon, and their friend suggests going to the popular resort called Costa del Sol. So again, not super groundbreaking information. It's stuff that you learn throughout playing the remake, but also it's stuff you already know if you played the original Final Fantasy VII, but I just kind of want to cover it a bit just because it's stuff that's going to happen in the sequels. Something I thought was kind of interesting that I might do a video on sometime soon is... Isn't it sort of strange that they're setting up these locations that are a little bit later into the game, at least in the original story, right? Like, you know, Costa del Sol, Gold Sauce, or Cosmo Canyon, that's not stuff you get to until you cross the ocean from Junon. Even Wutai. Wutai is something you don't get to go to until, like, you get the Tiny Bronco, right? After meeting Sid or whatever. So it's kind of strange that they're talking about these locations and not really having, like, NPCs or characters talk about, like, Calm, which is right by Midgar, or even Junon, which is still, like, the closest, like, town, at least in the original game, past Calm. And the reason why I bring that up is I'm wondering if we're not going to get that far into the story with Part 2, right? Because I'm assuming Part 2 is going to get us the rest of the team, right? Vincent, Sid, Kate Sith, Yuffie. Like, it, I'm assuming that's going to happen because we didn't get them in Part 1. I don't think they're going to make it, make us wait another game to get some of these characters. And if it is the case, we're going to get Sid in Part 2. We should be able to get the Tiny Bronco in Part 2. With the Tiny Bronco, we can go as far as Wutai and explore, like, the overworld, right? So that's hopefully that is the case. Just maybe a little bit sinful hat, but it's kind of weird that they're setting up locations that are a little bit farther past Midgar, not set up the locations that are closest to Midgar. Kind of coming off the back of that discussion, we have some quotes from the devs from the Ultimania talking about the sequel, the part two, possibly being open world, which I personally do want. 
The next installment provides a challenge to create a new way of expressing the world of Final Fantasy VII. For those who have played the remake, they must be very interested in the next installment. Are you already working on the next one? Hamaguchi, we are in the current stages of planning, so nothing is solid yet. Toriyama, the remake's first installment was centered in Midgar, which was the section I was responsible for in the original game. So I know it like the back of my hand. However, the next installments will take place in areas that, to be honest, I've forgotten about, so I'll have to rewatch the gameplay to revisit them. For example, after the characters leave Midgar, how exactly did they end up in Calm again? So we're going to pause right there really quick. I'm not entirely sure when this interview was done, like exactly, like was it done, you know, this year, last year, however long ago, I don't know. But I hope to God they're not still in the planning stages for part two. Like we were told last year around E3, almost exactly a year ago, that they were already kind of working on part two. And if like fast forward to 2020 after release of the first game, if they're still just planning the game, having started actually developing it, we could be in for quite a long wait. How would the remake reimagine the world map from the original game? Yes, that's something we also have to consider. For the first installment of the remake, the concept was to have the player experience the events within Midgar, and we'd like to have the next game allow the player to experience the vast world of FF7. However, if we are to create a large world, we have to consider how exactly we can do so while also telling a dramatic story. So right there we have Naoki Hamaguchi, who's a co-director alongside Tetsuya Nomura for the remake project, saying that he wants the players to experience the vast world of FF7 with the next installment. They want it to be a big world, essentially, an open world game, whatever. So that's got to be the first time we've had any of the developers talk about really part two at all, because we haven't had much information on that. But also the possibility of it maybe being an open world game, which is fantastic. And I'm pretty sure this is what everybody wants. I can't imagine anybody else wants another linear game. I don't even, again, I don't even know how you do an overworld map and it be linear anyways. You gotta be able to walk from like the Midgar area to Calm, right? Like, how do you do that linear? But while I do want an open world game, a big map to explore, I also want substance. I don't want it to just be like bland and nothing to do, like you're just fighting monsters. I want like some new locations as well. Even if they're like caves or random like towns or small villages or whatever like i want stuff to do besides just walking to calm and fighting monsters along the way so i think the best solution for this as well because i don't think they're going to do the entire world of gaia in part two right even though they did in the original game is a lot easier on playstation one i don't know that they're going to do it here i think the best solution here is multiple good sized maps as opposed to a seamless world so what i mean by that is like the midgar area so midgar calm you know fort condor mithril mines chocobo ranch Junon, like that's its own map, and then you get on the cargo ship, you go across to Costa del Sol, like Costa del Sol, Mount Corel, Corel, Gold Saucer, Cosmic Cane, all that stuff that's over on that continent is its own map as well. I personally believe that's the best way to handle it because if they're trying to make this big, huge world for us to explore, everything else is going to suffer as a whole. Whereas if they can keep them kind of confined, where they you go through a load screen to get into these big maps to explore, they can make them all a lot more detailed, a lot more quests, a lot more things to do. Think of something like Witcher 3, for example, as well. Like, you have massive areas to explore, but you go through a load screen to get into new maps, right? But once you're in there, they're massive areas, and they're seamless. Something like that. And to sort of wrap up the video, we have this part here that says, Lastly, please tell us what you're excited about for the next installment. But the answer we really only focus on is Toriyama. that says, Even though the first installment took place only in Midgar, it's still had such a large volume of content, and I'm a bit apprehensive on how we will create the next installment's large world. We were able to polish Midgar using the latest technology, and who knows? I feel like in the next installment, we might use a completely different technique in creating the world of FF7. No matter what shape it takes on, I hope that everyone can look forward to the next installment. And the reason why I wanted to read that is because Toriyama is speaking definitively about the next game having a large world. He literally says that he doesn't know how they're going to build the next game's large world. So I do think that's a good hint at the game being open world or something like that. But anyways, my dudes, that's pretty much the video. A bit of a longer video, but I think it's needed to be kind of long anyways just because we haven't uploaded in a while. But of course, as always, I want to pass off to you guys. What are your thoughts on part two? Do you think it's going to be open world? And how far do you think we're going to get into the world of FF7? Do you think we're going to get as far as Wutai? Or are we just going to get to maybe Junon, maybe Costa del Sol, Gold Saucer, Cosmo Canyon? Like how far do you think we're going to get? Either way, leave your thoughts more in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Once I did more Final Fantasy VII Remake content, turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter at the Dash and David and my Discord. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later guys. Give me a smile, give me forever for a while. Give me forever for a while. Quit acting like a bitch. Or at least let's like the child. Give me serenity.